Good morning. <clears throat> I was thinking yesterday about data accessibility and what could be uh, uh, keeping your secrets or not necessarily obfuscating secrets but making them more difficult to, to get. So I posited, I, I was thinking about this because like no matter what kind of complicated file structure scheme of ones and zeros you can come up with, as soon as it's entered into someone's supercomputer, they can process it however they please. So that's that's kind of the uh, the issue. So why not stop earlier than that? Why not go prior to that? <clears throat> so make it difficult to get into the supercomputer. Because once you got it into the supercomputer, you can bend and flex with the data as much as you like and try to find things out. <clears throat> but you still have to get it into the supercomputer. So what data is accessible, but difficult to get at in bulk? And uh, my thoughts came back to, uh, <laughs> my thoughts came back to the floppy drive. Uh, I was, I mean, it is relevant. I was doing some work and uh, one of the computers on the, the line, one of the operator stations was very old and it was having issues and the CD-ROM didn't work. So I was in this loop of copying floppies back and forth at uh, 1.44 megabytes per trip. And, you know, I'm sure you've worked with... Or, uh, I, I'm actually not sure if you've worked with floppies before. <laughs> There's always a chance that it just... The, the copy was just bad. It's just corrupt. It just didn't come out right. Uh, plus, there's the matter of the actual physical reading of the floppy drive. Just copying things off of it, the speed, uh, the speed of data movement, data mobility, I'm not sure what you would say. <laughs> the speed of data movement is, is so low that it's, uh, it's very difficult. <laughs> you're, you're just waiting. You're just, there's nothing to do but wait. So, if I have, um my encryption key stored on a floppy drive and that floppy drive is uh, labeled or not labeled you know it would probably be best uh, labeled something random but memorable to you in particular you know like like any other key uh, scheme um, I'm not sure what you would call that uh, or key or password scheming you pretty much just have to remember the seven to nine character, seven to nine word. Um, come on, the seven to nine word pass phrase, and then once you have that pass phrase, you salt that. You add more things to it. <laughs> so, this kind of assumes that you have some randomly selected <clears throat> series of words that you can use. Uh, as a secret code to yourself that only you will know and you will definitely remember and definitely not forget um, so that you can find whatever it is you're looking to find so uh, those discs having those discs labeled in a box and having it not you know you don't have uh, a thousand black floppies and then one orange one and that one's the one that has your key on it come on um, but you know generally where in the box so <laughs> You need your encryption key, so you open up the box, you look in the box, and you find the key, and you pull it out, and it looks just like all the other ones. And you put it in, and you use the key, and then you take it out, and you put it back in the box. Uh, you could probably, let's see, I figured there would be like wear marks in there, maybe, after some time. I'm not sure, there's other, other considerations. But the point is, that if anyone were to come to you and try to get your key, they must, <clears throat> at minimum spend over a minute copying data off of a floppy drive and then they must do that for a thousand minutes or 500 minutes and uh, that's, this is assuming there's no CRC check problems you know the, the, that the, uh, the floppy works properly for the first time and that the copy goes successfully <laughs> And then, you know, it's a floppy drive. They are still somewhat sensitive. <clears throat> so if you were to have issues with it, 
uh, or want to get rid of things, well, uh, a, a large magnet <laughs> passing over the entire box of uh, floppy drives would probably do enough to and do enough damage. <clears throat> but the point is, the point is the uh, the speed of the data extraction or the style of the data extraction. Now, if you present me with this problem, you know, I thought about this as far as uh, USB drives, like thumb drives, goes. Um, <laughs> Like, well, how is this any different from buying <clears throat> a thousand uh, 128 megabyte uh, thumb drives? And you can buy them for a dollar thirty on eBay if you buy a thousand. And the answer is the speed and uh, and the accessibility somewhat. Because if I was presented with that problem, I would say, cool, uh, you know, give me a little bit of a budget. And I'm gonna buy, uh, I'm gonna daisy chain a whole bunch of USB um, hubs and connect them all together, <laughs> powered USB hubs. And then I'm gonna hit the, uh, I, there's probably a 255 device limit, possibly. <laughs> Maybe it's 512. <clears throat> um, but then I'm gonna plug, you know, <laughs> as many USB drives in as I can and then let the computer copy all the data off of all of the drives, that wouldn't be too difficult, and then go through the process of swapping all the drives. <laughs> so it's a physical process, and it's a little annoying, but it's USB, so it's quick. Uh, <clears throat> it would be USB 1.0 probably, at uh, 128 megabytes. <laughs> but still, <clears throat> still not bad. Um, same thing with SD cards, you know? SD cards are not easy to erase, uh, on mass, certainly not as easy as floppy drives, um, but same card reading speed. You know, you're still uh, physically inserting. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so. Th this is the this is the process. The physical process is the uh, is the security. <laughs> um, uh, what is it? There was a so there's a full size SD card, flash card, and then there's the micro SD. There was, a, there was actually a mini SD card that was in between that large size and the mini size. If you were to buy a thousand of those, <clears throat> you would have to have, you would have to put them all into adapters. <laughs> you would have to put them into adapters and then feed them in. And then when you're done, take them out and then take them out of the adapters and then put in a new one. <laughs> This is all these little physical processes. Uh, still, the, the speed is uh, too fast. Again, not very easy to erase. But that, that's how I would do the USB thing. I would just set a whole bunch of USB hubs together. Um, <clears throat> but if it were floppy drives, I think I could do the same. Although I would probably be limited to how many uh, USB floppy drives I could purchase, you know, there's, there are some, you can certainly buy some, I don't know if you can buy, you know, a thousand, that might be too difficult, um, because that would be my first thought, is like, buy as many USB floppy drives as I can, and if that, I mean, that number should be, I'd want that number to be like 50 or 100 or something like that, but I'm not sure if that would be okay. Also, USB hubs are a lot cheaper for the amount of reading that they'll do than a single floppy drive. So all of this, this uh, the, the logistics of getting data, getting all that data off, is the problem. The logistics is, is the issue. <clears throat> That's just very silly. Uh, so, you can take this further. You know, we can be storing data on five and a quarter inch floppy drives. Now those suckers, those are actually, those were more expensive uh, because <clears throat> I think they've passed into, uh, not antique, but uh, a vintage territory. So, the, you know, the price goes down and then the price goes back up as they become more rare. Uh, <clears throat> I was able to find uh, 200 floppy disks for uh, $70 which is pretty good price but the five and a quarters was it was just difficult to find five and a quarter drives uh, five and a quarter drives just as slow just as sensitive uh, maybe a little slower and the drives are much much bigger 
much harder to use and I actually don't know if there's any kind of USB adapter for something like that I really don't um, there's certainly been a lot of work done uh, creating a uh, creating adapters to make SD cards work in place of those five and a quarter drives however Nothing that I know of has been like, oh boy, I sure want to read <laughs> this five and a quarter floppy drive in my new MacBook. <laughs> what 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 hardware solutions exist for this? <laughs> so imagine that those are you know just as sensitive, even more rare. The drives are much harder to get, and I'm not even sure what you would plug them into. You have to run them through some other kind of system. So then you have another. <laughs> You have this other layer of like, how do I, what what kind of computer do I plug this into? Like, I'm trying to get this into my supercomputer, but I must first transfer it into a different computer <laughs> that can actually accept this five and a quarter drive. I have to find an old, uh, an old Mac and plug it in, or a, an old Commodore and read the data off of it. Then I have to figure out a way to get the data off the Commodore <laughs> and into the supercomputer. It's just this uh, this spiraling um, complexity. And I love it. It's just, it's really cool. Because if you are the person who has the key and knows where the key is, you grab the floppy, you put it in the drive, you read the output of it, and you use the key. And it's a little bit easier, you know, from, from my end, from the key side, from the key owner side, to be able to say, you know, pop get the floppy, put the floppy in the USB drive, <clears throat> in the floppy USB drive, and then here's, you know, press go, and it tries to read the key from that drive, and if it's not there, it's not there, but if it is, if you have the right disk, then hey presto, everything works just fine. But, you don't get that with a five and a quarter, because then you have to, you do actually have some type of emulated system. Although, I'm at the point where I can you know, we'll, we'll write custom uh, uh, Python scripts to to drive a floppy uh, to drive a floppy drive to run a floppy drive. That's just fine. <clears throat> we just need to read the output at the, at whatever the set set speed is. It's actually relatively easy to drive a to run a uh, a floppy drive from its pins. Uh, so I imagine it's pretty simple to run the same from a five and a quarter. <clears throat> and that brings up the other point. I am uh, I'm a bit of a maker, so what uh, what prevents me from making some kind of insanely complicated, ridiculous key uh, SD SD card or USB drive system that switches and combines data and modifies the output that comes out of it uh, transparently, so that you have like this weird looking thing where you enter a code into it and plug it into the USB drive and then hold down buttons three and four and five uh, while holding a magnet right here <laughs> to activate the read switch in order for it to read you know the the, the correct set of uh, bits flipped so that it modifies the data appropriately and actually reads as a proper device and the answer is my imagination that's that's all that prevents it from that from happening it's the limit there is no limit. It is just me <laughs> and how stupid I can get, how creatively ridiculous I can get. Um, <clears throat> that obviously opens up the opportunities for misdirection and things like that. Uh, but of course, these problems are not so... And this is, this is another thing, though. <laughs> these problems are... Um, you know, the previous solution was to have key, key pairs... And those keys can be spread across, you know, whatever. You know, you know where to find exactly the three keys you need. And you take this key and this key and this key and combine them, XOR them all together, and you get your output key. Which means that you have to take all your reams of data and put them in the supercomputer. And then just start XORing and generating output, which is one of those uh, <clears throat> lovely exponential problems. Because once the problem becomes exponential, you... Uh, it's very easy to make it uh, take take enough time that it would, uh, you know, you're, you're getting to the heat death of the universe. Um, <clears throat> all very doable. 
I mean, there's other avenues of attack, but I'm just, uh, I'm just talking about messing around, making things more difficult, and, uh, making people hate their, their lives and their jobs if they're trying to snoop around. <laughs> That's about all I got. Hopefully I'll be getting back to these a little bit more normally. We're getting back a little bit to more normalcy, so we'll see.